Hello and welcome to a new little making of, uh, this time about the most important interior set of the movie. So this room is the office set of the human main character. And so it's a working environment, but he's the only one who uses it. So it also serves as an extension of the character himself, revealing a lot more about him than the puppet could do on its own. And I think that's a really important consideration when designing sets. But before we could think about the design and what the character would like, we had to make it work for stop motion animation at all. And that's something I did very wrong on past sets, so I really tried to make it better this time. I think the two most important design rules were rigidity and modularity. So the entire set is built around this very heavy aluminum frame, which is rigid enough to not bend under different loads and temperatures. And then all the wooden parts are screwed to the frame. There's no interconnection between the ceiling and wall and floor pieces. It's all held together by this frame. I think I should add it's far from perfect as it is and the biggest improvement I would make on a future design would be get rid of these top bars because it's really limiting for the animator to reach in and to bump his head against this thing and yeah it's really limiting and it would be far better to have these bars removable as well. But besides this I think it's still the best set I ever built like comfort wise for working with it. All the floor and wall pieces are made from this very thick plywood, which is very rigid as well. And instead of having one large wall for the entire side of the set, we have these little modules here. And this really gives us the freedom to reconfigure the set for each shot. So everything which is visible from the camera's perspective is in frame and everything else is missing. So the animator has as much room as possible to work. Out of necessity to hide the seam between the individual uh, wall pieces, I came up with the idea for these uh, stone columns here as part of the set itself. So I think this gives it a really nice industrial look as well, but honestly it was just kind of a happy little accident because yeah, I needed a way to cover up the seams. The wooden paneling on the walls and the floors and ceiling pieces were all built very similarly. First I stained the very bright plywood black to have a neutral background. And then I glued on this little veneer sheets to have a bit of texture, which I later stained brown again. Also the wallpaper pattern was exclusively designed for this set by Toby, who thought having little tie symbols as part of the pattern would be a fun little detail for this character set. And uh, these stone columns here are built the exact same way as all of my city model. It's based on styrofoam which just gets burned with a soldering iron to create this brick texture and then it's painted and glued to a very rigid uh, wood piece so it can be screwed to the aluminum frame as well. Some of the wall segments also include some furniture pieces or other details which are directly incorporated into the wall to make it a solid piece. For example, this window or the file cabinet with the little drawers are directly part of the wall piece. 
the big file cabinet was the most fun to make I think because it's very neat with the little drawers and everything and I even polished some of the screw heads to make it all look very neat and shiny. As you can see, some of the little drawers are actually fully functional because the human is going to use them in an animation in the movie. I think the most important perspective in this set is the view towards the desk with the chair and the human sitting exactly in the center. I wanted this shot to be very symmetrical, a bit Wes Anderson-like maybe, but I didn't want the human to be sitting just in front of a very empty wall. I want to have a bit more depth in there. So I came up with the idea to just have some copper tubes going right through his office. I just sketched out the design on a piece of paper in one-to-one -one scale and then assembled it from different copper tubes and copper sheet metal and everything. I really didn't want to over-engineer this too much because uh, they are just in the background, there are no real close-ups and they are not that important for the story. But then again, I didn't want to have it look too scrapyard-like because it's a very neat office after all and these tubes are probably uh, cleaned very often by some robots. Instead of going for the rusty, dirty look I usually used on past sets, this time I polished everything with vinegar and salt to make it really shiny. wanted to give a bit more life to the system so it actually seems active. So I added some valves and also incorporated some tiny light bulbs into the tubes, which I covered with some stained paper to just produce a warm glow which is emitted from these heating elements. The ceiling lamps for this room are a bit of a steampunk reinterpretation of the usual neon tubes you can find in most offices. I bought some tube-shaped incandescent bulbs and then designed a pattern around them, which I could easily bend from copper wires. The little reflectors for the lights are just sought out manually from a sheet metal of copper and then everything is soldered together. Similarly to the piping system behind his desk, also, the ceiling lamps get polished with vinegar and salt to be really shiny. So for the remaining wall areas, we also wanted to create some tiny paintings. And those were a great opportunity to incorporate even more details about the character who is living in this environment. So Toby masterfully created some tiny paintings with ink and watercolor and I designed some little frames which we laser cut from plywood and then everything came together and was mounted on the wall pieces. And it 
really started looking like a nice Victorian office. Of course, the set also needed lots of additional furniture and props, but uh, most of them were built beforehand and are not really part of this video. However, if you're interested, some of them already got their own little videos, so if you want to check out the making of this typewriter there or the tiny little watch the human is going to use uh, in one of his scenes, then go check that out as well. So in preparation for the animations, everything needed to be fixed in place. So we screwed down all the furniture pieces and glued most of the props in place. Except those the human character needed to interact with. Those are just temporarily uh, fixed in place with blue tech or any other sort of removable glue. So everything, including the human puppet, was now ready to be animated. And as you might know, the animation of this set was entirely done by Albert Radl, who is a professional animator. And he did over five minutes of animation at his own studio in Düsseldorf. So we had to move everything to his place, which was quite a challenge. But thanks to the modular design of the set, uh, we were able to disassemble it here and assemble it at his place again and it worked out fine without any damages to the set, which was quite relieving. It took Albert a couple of months to complete the scenes on this set and then everything was transported back to my place, where we started modifying the set a bit for the last big shoot. The last scene on this set was eventually completed one month ago in November 22, which was a really long, very challenging shot which really deserves his own video and of course you can check that out. It's the update video from November 22 where I'm going to talk about this giant last shoot. And now everything is done and I'm really relieved it worked out so great. So uh, this set might be done for now, but we're actually going to reuse many parts of it for a future set, which will be a very similar room, um, just a bit more luxurious as it's going to represent the boss's office. Okay, I think that's about all I have to tell about this little set. But if you're interested to see a bit more details about other topics, for example, the little typewriter or other props or the human main character himself, then go check out my YouTube channel here. There are tons of other videos about other topics there you might enjoy as well if you liked this one. At last I want to thank all the people who were involved in the creation of this thing. So a huge thanks to Maurice and Toby who helped me to create this actual set piece and then to Albert Radl who brought it to life using stop motion animation and now Wenzel who is editing this video for you right now. So thanks to these great helpers but also thanks to my amazing Patreon supporters who enable me to continue the journey on this project and allow me to make videos like this without having to do annoying advertisement and things like this. So that's really appreciated. Thank you all very much. And everyone else, thanks a lot for watching this video till the end. That's very valuable in itself. And if you want to become a patron yourself, then uh, there's a very limited offer right now till the end of the year 2022. So if you become a patron on the Steam in a Char tier or above, you will receive a unique screen used miniature, a little prop from that set, which was used in the last shoot in November by the end of the year. So that's a very limited special offer right now. And of course there are also a lot of other nice tiers. So maybe check that out here if you're interested. And I think that's about all I have to say for now. Thank you all very much. Have a lovely day and bye bye.